Hey Minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and on this episode of Calling All Titans, I'll be talking about the Great Grandma, the New Granny's Titan. It's a little early to be talking about 10th anniversary stuff in depth, but for some reason, on today of all days, I feel like it's a good day to talk about this Titan. It's been a while since we've had a Titan to discuss, so as a reminder, when discussing Titans, we have to ask what were the issues with the original faction, what can solve those issues, and does the Titan provide that? Before I reveal the full Titan ability, I want to speak briefly about the Titans in the 10th anniversary set. I think that this set unofficially acknowledges the problems with many of the previous Titans. While I still don't have many games logged with each of these individually, because of the sheer amount of content I have to go through in a short amount of time, I will say that so far, no Titan jumps out like a Dagon or a Great Talon Killer, and that's a good thing. You can tell based on the word count alone that these Titans have a legitimate attempt to be more considerate and contextualized. Also, there is no Earth in the multiverse where explorers need a Titan before Grannies, so I'm viewing this Titan through the lens of course correction, and I currently view the Great Grandma as one of the stronger new Titans because of the relative weakness of Grannies. So what was the issue with Grannies? Where do I start? They had some objectively bad cards. They had real problems with item potents. They have extra actions but lack good internal actions to play. They force a game plan that can backfire and lack a payoff for putting minions on the bottom of your deck instead of just drawing them. Despite its deferred nature though, their card draw can be strong and they do have a nice recursion package. It just happens to be focused externally. Their general game plan, while murky at best, is that they want to sort their cards with the actions going to the top and minions to the bottom and my struggle with them has always been that drawing cards just always seems better. I can play Attic Treasures to bury 3 cards, which Matriarch can draw back, but that is a lot of trouble to just draw 2 cards from my action. I think pure draw power beats deck sifting for this deck size, and the Granny game plan has never been appealing. So what about a Granny Titan? Well, we've all had years to think about what a Granny Titan would look like. And over the years, there were 3 obvious abilities that I felt like it could have, and if you gave me any one of these, Knowing that Titans typically have two abilities, I'd feel better about their direction. I also felt strongly that the game would give me none of these things, which is precisely what happened, so those abilities will stay hidden. But spoiler alert, while this isn't the Titan I wanted, and though I have mixed feelings about parts of it, it is overall a good step for grannies and does make them considerably better. First, we have to talk about the entry criteria, which requires knowing the order of your deck. The Great Grandma can enter play if you can correctly identify whether the top two cards of your deck or the bottom two cards of your deck are minions or actions. If you are correct, the Titan can enter play, so after sifting your minions to the bottom, you'll have the confidence to guess correctly. Except you don't need the confidence, since you can just guess randomly because there is no downside to guessing wrong. Some may view the reveal as a downside, but the reveal is inevitable, and I don't really fear any granny cards individually. Plus, I know how far off I am from when I need to depend on it, so I strongly recommend doing this on the first turn. By doing it from the bottom every time, you aren't giving away new information, and you can build upon your previous information. Barring a shuffle, you will get it right on the second try. It's actually pretty difficult for grannies to know the top two cards of their deck, as they need specific cards to enable it, and the timing has to be very specific because you will draw those cards soon. So I always focus on the bottom. Once the Great Grandma is in play, you get a deceptively strong and deceptively AP ongoing ability. This ability, which is global, can easily be 2 or 3 power to start. Just by looking at or revealing cards, you get power, which is easily triggerable by Granny. This helps with their item potents in a somewhat gimmicky way, as you now have a reason to trigger the same talent twice. Consider a card like Granny's Purse, which I deem really bad. It's a cantrip at best, you can bury a good minion, and it only is a cantrip for actions. Now it becomes a little more like On Guard, without the directly affected benefit, but this power adds up quickly, which is where the AP comes in. How much power can be generated from looking, and what cards will I be playing? This has made my turn slightly longer when I don't really struggle with analysis paralysis. The temporary nature just happens to demand precision. Don't even get me started on the game I played with Innsmouth without Dagon. But gimmick or not, this is a much needed power boost that does tie into many of their cards, and gives the grandies the ability to actually break bases. And then there is the talent, which is very reminiscent of their one payoff card, Hush My Stories Are On. Putting minions on the bottom of your deck to draw them later doesn't make much sense and can actually hurt you. Staging minions there so you can play them when they matter is an actual game plan. Now my first reaction to seeing this talent was that it makes Matriarch worse. Minions you draw are minions you can't play with the talent. However, in my games with this Titan, I've come to understand that this is a necessary evil for the direction they took Grannies. 
because I think this is where most of the fun increase actually originates. I'm intentionally staging a minion and using the bottom of my deck as an extension of my hand. This is where you start to see a difference between event kit titans and these titans, because the extra play is localized and power capped as opposed to a Dagon extra minion play or an extra action from other titans. This talent gives more options to chicken soup and always zoom at grannies as you now have legitimate reasons to bury minions as opposed to always putting your best cards on top of your deck. Combining these two abilities, it's actually pretty easy to give grannies an easy 4 or more power burst, one that comes with no downside. And while the lack of downside really does bother me, especially if it loses a clash, it can generally come right back out again by revealing the same cards. Part of me feels like it's grannies and they need all the help they can get. Then again, I didn't realize this in my first game, but the act of using the talent itself triggers the ongoing ability. That means that grandma being played, even if you don't move the card, will be 4 power, 2 base power, 1 from the talent, and 1 from grandma herself since they are discrete triggers. As I said before, I do think this titan is a step in the right direction, making grannies better and more enjoyable and giving them more partners. I wanted to talk about a few new pairings that I like that this titan creates, as well as revisiting some previous ones to see how they changed. With the ongoing ability worded as it is, favoring discrete triggers, we need to think about who has those on demand, and Astro Knights come to mind. Space Knight and Manners Bot can often compete with each other, but now they combine for 2 power in addition to any potential draw. You have Poopox, which I still won't use, but if you did, that's another power. It combos nicely for It's a Trap to give you slightly more swing potential. But Astro Knights also bring a great minion to play from the bottom of your deck, Ghost Knight. Given Nana style plays, cards like Yield to Rage, Block the Probe, and Use the Fours, all of which are temporary power, combine Nussie with a temporary power from the ongoing ability. Grannies may be the one faction that can overcome the forced burying and prepare for battle, which also triggers the Great Grandma, even though contextually it's not the best fit in terms of tempo. A lot of players say that the Astros can be inconsistent, and while I don't agree myself, having extra draw and deck sorting can certainly help with that. The sifting and card draw can also benefit top-heavy factions, and the Titan was surprisingly fun with Mad Scientists. Angry Mob becomes an even more powerful finisher since you can immediately bury a Nana to be played for an additional 5 power with the Great Grandma. Grannies primarily draw minions, which feeds the machine for the monsters, and adds a lot of power granting actions that Nana loves. I found that the power counters and the persistence paid off nicely if I couldn't deterministically break a base. With proper sorting, I was able to start with an uber serum monster on one turn, and solo a 21 point base through Nana, Granny's Purse, Jolt, and Mad Scientist extra plays. Between Nana and Lab Scientist, you have a really good chance of getting a 5 power extra play from the bottom of your deck, with the potential to compound for more. And since I love the body shop upside of Mad Scientist, Grannies can get it faster and recur it later at the same time. One combo I absolutely grew to hate is Granny Vikings, but with the Titan, it's actually pretty enjoyable. As far as strong soldiers go, Shield Maiden is right up there, and it makes for a great play from the bottom of your deck. Previously, this combo was based on the idea that Huskarl could play cards that Nata could play, but it ends up being really inefficient, and that problem is solved by the ongoing boost. Two Huskarls can place two cards, with the top being Granny's Purse, that's four power, and Nana is played to gain a power, playing Granny's Purse, which reveals and plays another card, which could be an action you stole. Vikings also present a rare opportunity to easily trigger the top card condition of Granny's because of the Huskull talents. The timing works out that this can happen before any of your plays. It also means that anything you play is at least three power with potential for more, and if the Granny card draw begins to offset the Viking negative card draw, you're really in business. This combo went from theoretically strong and inconsistent to being consistent strong actually makes me want to play two factions I generally don't like. I also wanted to revisit two pretty well-known granny combos. Previously, alien grannies had the play to disintegrate their own invader, knowing that they could draw it back with matriarch. However, this required matriarch, which wasn't a guarantee. Now, however, you can disintegrate an invader and immediately play it with the titan, making VP farming much faster. The extra plays also gives them a legitimate threat to break bases. Now, for years, there had been talk of an anecdotal rule that prevents Titans from being replayed the same turn, but as of the time of recording, it hasn't been formalized yet, so this play will still remain. And Granny Aliens have an interesting play where they use the Granny's talent to play a minion from the bottom of their deck, intentionally terraform the base to remove their own Titan, using the on-play criteria to replay Great Grandma since it loses its memory of its previous play, and play another extra minion there. Yes, I know this creates infinite loops with Mergicon, but they still haven't patched it. For Rose Plaza Mall, this is potentially 3 extra minions on top of everything else you just had, 
plus your regular minion for a lot of VP quickly. Of course, there is a real chance that future rule changes will eliminate this play, but until it gets formalized, enjoy it while you can. Finally, Granny Time Travelers were mostly known for spamming Time Walk, but this gives them a legitimate other play in between Time Box lifespans. Time Raider can ensure that the Great Grandma triggers for an easy 4 power Time Raider or 5 power Nana. And because Time Raiders can use their talents every turn, you don't have to worry about sorting your existing cards, you can just keep stacking the cards you want to ensure 2 minions every time. While there is some Titan contention, this gives you something to do while Time Box accrues counters, and I don't think this combo wants extra actions that much since they can spam Time Walk eventually. Is the Great Grandma perfect? No. But it does make Grannies better, giving them more payoff to their deck sorting, even if random shots in the dark can still be fruitful. Even if you have no idea what the bottom card of your deck is and you hit an action, that's still a global power. In terms of making Grannies more accessible, it definitely succeeds in that regard and will help them maintain comparative parity in a lot more games. The obligatory sorting can still screw up your plans, so make sure you factor that in if you inadvertently push the wrong minion to the bottom. But the Titan strength can generally make up for that, since any minion is usually at least 4 power with the ongoing. Be sure to use your actions to self-correct anything that gets screwed up in your deck, because the force bearing of a granny can actually lock you out of the Titan for a considerable amount of time. Are you excited for the Great Grandma? Who will you pair with grannies now? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's shut it down.